him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling over half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like Bianca Belair, huh? Best podcast, rush it in the air, huh? From the rings and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw him up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling over half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Hello everyone, happy new year, and welcome back to the Wrestling Rehab Up podcast. I'm your host, Mari Forth, and with me, I, I can't bring in this new year without him, my what? co-host, my tag team partner, Mr. Matt Scott. Matt, how are you? Hello, 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 hello. I am thrilled to be here, thrilled to be back, Mari. We've been gone so long so long man. so so long but we haven't forgotten about you mm-hmm. the listeners mari you know we haven't forgotten about wrestling we've had it on our minds this whole time um but i'm i'm just happy to be back mari what what are we even doing what is wrestling what is podcasting i don't <laughs> remember what are you, yeah where, what do i do with my hands uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're back. Uh, Thank you guys for everybody who understood. Like, you know, sometimes you just need a little break. You know, we had a lot of things going on. (laughs) Definitely that. But, Uh you know, we are committed to the road to WrestleMania. We've been committed. If there's one thing we're going to do is we're going to come back when it's the road to WrestleMania. Because that Uh is, of course, everyone's favorite time of the year. And this mm-hmm. year we have a big announcement because we oh. will actually be oh. going to WrestleMania. I mean, I'm pretty sure we said it like eight times. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm pretty ready. sure. It's okay. We've said it before, but I just wanted to make sure y'all knew we will be at WrestleMania 40 Philadelphia. And you know, we're hoping to do some collabs or hoping to uh Ooh. do an Instagram takeover to let you know Ooh. like what, what we're gonna be doing while we're there. If you're gonna yeah. be there, hit us up, you know, maybe mm. maybe like a, a little meet and greet oh, moment. Matt. What do you think? Together in person, like look, we're ready for anything, mm-hmm. but also like the collabs are exciting, meeting listeners is exciting. But yeah, yeah. I like the idea of a meetup. I know that I will I'm planning on being in philly a little bit longer than the weekend a few days mm-hmm. before this is my first wrestlemania yeah ah! we really yeah. need <laughs> sound effects because like nobody <laughs> wants to hear me do that we again need and ding. i won't yeah. <laughs> again yeah but mari this is not your first wrestlemania uh so no. we're gonna go on that journey together it'll i'm sure that we'll talk a lot more about it coming up we don't even know what the main events will be no. We don't even know who we're going to see. I, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready. I know. I don't know if I'm ready either, but I'm like super excited to get into it. And that's the, that's the whole point. That's, that's the whole point of gearing up to the road to WrestleMania. The first stop, as we know, the Royal Rumble. And yeah. that's in about, what, three weeks or so? Mm-hmm. So Bring it on. This is literally the best time of the year. We're going to have some great, amazing guests over this season. And... We're going to try and make this the biggest wrestling or half up season ever, ever, ever. 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 Oh, no, sorry. Was, so make sure know. you stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to us by going to Rob has a website.com slash wrestling feed. Make sure you go to the Rob has a podcast, YouTube page, search wrestling yes. or half up. And you can see all of our, our, uh, rest, our video podcasts on YouTube. And, and it's, it's right there. It's handy. It's, you can see our beautiful faces. Yes, yes it's quality. Emphasis yes. on the T part. We're, we're always bringing the T, and we're going to do that again today as we talk about our awards for 2023, of course. But, Mari, I mean, I'm I'm pumped. I'm ready to dive into to this, um, all of the yeah. things that some we talked about, some that we didn't talk about. Um, yeah, so... For a, a for a special comeback episode, we decided to do something like a wrestling wrap up 2023 awards. Shout yes. out to uh, Keeks over on All Elite Keeks who uh, does mm-hmm. one of these for AW. Definitely go check her out, friend of the pod. Please. We've had her on a few times, um, but we wanted we wanted to do this as a way to talk about some of the things we missed. 
Um, mm -hmm. Also to acknowledge like some great wrestling over the year. I, I think this was a, a pretty good year for wrestling in general. And we would love your opinion. So after this, you know, we'll post uh, we'll post uh, the categories on the job has a squad <laughs> job has a squad cast uh -huh, Facebook group. Uh -huh. I, I, I saw you laughing. <laughs> it's been a minute, and honestly, I wasn't even laughing at you. I just wanted to say because look, we do want your thoughts. We want to know who would win the different awards from you. Yeah. What we don't want. We're Oh, what it's for you to tell us how trash our nominations and our Sorry. choices are. These are our 2023 awards. These are ours, me and Mari. We will say things, we'll give people awards because it's in our heart, it's in our soul. Mm -hmm. But we do want to know who you would select. But you know, you know how you know how we do. We just do what we want to do. Right. We we like we said, we think ratings and rankings are, are arbitrary. Arbitrary and, and reductive. Yes. <laughs> but they're they're fun to do. It's a fun way to talk about a whole bunch of different things. So that's what we're gonna do mm -hmm. today. Um, and we're gonna start off with the glow up of the year award. Um glow up of the year. Glow up of the year for um any wrestler who ha who has like such a phenomenal like just character glow up trajectory wrestling something that you know um they just excelled at this year and I I feel like I have to start with uh Trick Williams Trick Williams over on NXT Matt mm. he is doing phenomenal things like I kept up with a little bit of NXT over the break because like. When there's no pressure to have to like actually watch it, you know, yeah. it's kind of funny. I watch it when it's good. And mm -hmm. the the trick mellow storyline, trick winning the um the little gauntlet thing, then winning the um the number one contenders match just recently. The NXT crowd is eating out of Trick's mm -hmm. hand, and it's so amazing because we saw him when he debuted in 2021. And we saw there, we all saw, everybody saw how much potential he had. And to see that his potential is finally being realized is mm -hmm. amazing. And the whole storyline with him and Mello, where it's like, did he attack him? Did he not attack him? It's amazing to me. Yeah. And, you know, when I first saw that storyline come up, I was not that excited because I just, yeah. Thought would, and I thought we would see these two just divide and become bitter rivals mm -hmm. and that wasn't the story that we were given which i think right. is really refreshing because i mean the, like it's it's just so powerful let's think about everything that we've seen with trick and with mellow like all the barbershop segments all those Amazing. segments that just tie so much to black culture yes that um it, it hurts when people tear us apart so yes. that they weren't <laughs> torn apart and it, it's a lot meatier than i thought it was going to be so mm -hmm. i love that i am really excited to see what's ahead for trick because really we were never positioned to think of him as the act as a main eventer but mm -hmm. he has he has all the different pieces and i yeah. like that i do really appreciate how we had mellow given to us i was gonna say mellow trickled trickled yeah. out um, we got Mellow given to us, and and he, yeah, he did such a great now, job. Yeah, if Trick shining this year, um, exactly. in, in relation to Mellow, so it's just nice that we're we're getting both of them glowing up. Exactly. So we also have Trish. Uh, Trish, see there you go, <laughs> Tiffany Stratton. So <laughs> Tiffany Stratton, like I've said it before, Tiffany yeah. Stratton still like it's still hard for me to really connect with her. To be quite Ooh. honest, I'm still at that place yeah. where like it's hard for me to connect to her but it's like i recognize her work she she became the nxt women's champion um mm -hmm. this this past year she lost it to becky lynch and i think this is what really really propelled her 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 matches with becky lynch and showing that she could like like at least keep up with becky in the ring did mm -hmm. wonders for her so i yeah. like like i said i might not connect with her but I think she's done really good this year. Oh, 100% one, agree. And you just mentioning that Women's Championship Extreme Rules match, mm -hmm. like, I, I feel the need to go back and watch it. It was so much better than I, I would have assumed, <laughs> yeah. than I anticipated. I mean, I, we know that Becky is incredible, but so even good. just the booking of the match 
was amazing. And it really showcased Tiffany's athleticism. Mm -hmm. Her her character has been showcased so much with her. Yes. As champion. And, you know, I do think that this year was a weird one for the women's championship at the very start of the year, because yeah. we, I, I want to say Rock that like Rock in the heart, well, Roxanne, mm -hmm. well, Mandy Rose Rock was gone. Indy. Oh my God. That was, yeah. That was Indy. Mm -hmm. Indy was called up and so had to drop her championship. I believe Roxanne had it at one point. I want to say it felt really all over the place. It and really then did. Tiffany really locked in and I think brought renewed meaning to the championship. I mean Becky and then Becky, Becky. <laughs> but, yeah, but but yeah. Tiffany really held her own and it was just cool seeing her in the conversation with main roster superstars. Exactly. I would also say our you know our next nominee Solo Sokoa. I mean. This we'll talk about the bloodline storyline a little later, but I think uh, this was kind of a breakout year for him. Once the mm -hmm. once the storyline kind of split, I think after like WrestleMania, he started to really stand out. He had the really good match with John Cena. Yeah, <laughs> the match that him and John Cena had at Crown Jewel eclipsed the match that John Cena and Austin Theory had at WrestleMania by. <laughs> far it's it's not hard to do but by yes. <laughs> far it completely uh -huh. that, like that's how you put over new talent i think that that's exactly what it was and i think solo's new prominence in the 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 um bloodline storyline this this year really just propelled him forward yeah and i mean the only thing i think that really drags down solo for me well two things one is that the bloodline storyline which we will talk about yeah. later to me it just it cooled off a lot over it the did. course of this year now mm -hmm. maybe that maybe it could still be the feud or the storyline of the year because it was so good at the start of the year but beyond that beyond that cooling off like solo has so much potential we've talked about it so many times mm -hmm. so i you know i love this year for solo I think that his best, I know his best years are ahead of him, but I yeah. have no clue what that'll look like, especially post-Bloodline. Same. Uh, next up, you know, one of my personal faves, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, we, I think we, we touched on it a little bit because yes. I think he had started to turn right before he, we left. But Shinsuke's like the whole new packaging of him, like, Letting him speak Japanese, cut these promos on like Seth, and and he was he was mm -hmm. feuding with Cody as well, um, and these like comic book style vignettes that they're doing for him too. Like he, it's amazing this character glow up. Like my only problem with it is they need to give him more wins. Like they mm. do this all the time. Like Shinsuke is so good at changing characters, but they never give him the wins to back it up. So. Yeah, and that, but that's not his fault. That's Booking's fault. I think he himself has had a pretty good glow up. I agree, and it, you know, the the thing that I want to see with him that I feel like I always want to see with him when he gets a push is I want the championship around his yeah, waist. I do too. So wherever badly. he wants to carry. Honestly, mark my words, if Shinsuke wins the championship, he's going to be carrying that in some weird ass way. Like he'll have it It'd draped so from cool. his hair, from his yeah. like. It'll be something he used really to unique. Do that like around his neck with one of them. I can't remember. Yeah, Maybe around his icing. neck. But he just everything he does, his attention to detail is so on point. It is. So I mean, the glow up definitely was there this year. Shinsuke was reborn. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. I feel so bad for him because I feel like they just don't have any room for him. And I, I, I want it. Like I need it. He, he's so good at this character work. It's so great, and it's. Mm -hmm. So annoying. Um, and then finally, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green came back. <laughs> she came back. She like she herself has pushed her character and her glow up. Uh, we talked about it at the beginning of the year. I love the Karen gimmick. I absolutely adore the Karen gimmick. Mm -hmm. I thought once they put the once she got the belts, I thought she was doing great work with the belts until they started kind of keeping her off TV. I think the help of, of Samantha Ir 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 Irving, like saying her name the specific way. I think Chelsea Green has made like eliminate out of limits. I think she's not given much, but she yeah. squeezes every little moment out of what she gets. Yeah. And the other thing 
is to your point, like put her on commentary, put mm-hmm. her in backstage segments where she's looking for a tag team partner. Like whatever mm-hmm. they did shined. She Chelsea Green didn't miss this year at all. And mm-hmm. I think the the place where she shines the most for me is the contrast from where she is now to where she's been in the past. Like mm-hmm. she was in the 2015 version of Tough Enough doing her thing. She got I injured, that, yeah. I believe. I think she hurt her r- wrist back wrist then. Which so many times. She yeah. has hurt so many freaking times. And she's had so many false starts. The other thing with Chelsea is we really didn't talk with talk about her that much when she was outside of WWE, but she was in Impact doing the hot mess gimmick with like the messy the mm-hmm. lipstick and everything else all over the place. We probably mentioned it briefly somewhere in the history of this, the three plus year history of this podcast. Mm-hmm. But I will say that, I mean, She's just so she's phenomenal, and it's great that she hasn't been injured again. I don't understand how she held the tag team championship so long mm. this year because mm. we had her and Sonia, then her with Piper, rather than the titles being stripped. So clearly, the company believes in her, and I hope they believe in her enough for her to be the champ. But we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. I I really believe we'll get there. So that's our five nominees for Glow Up of the Year. I I personally, I think I'm going to give it to Trick. I think he is the one who, who has had the massive, uh, like, just trajectory, like, ri- rise in trajectory. Um, so that's where my vote is going. What do you think, Matt? You know, mine has to go to Chelsea Green. Because that- while Trick <laughs> is phenomenal, while Trick really is phenomenal, like, that is on the NXT level. It, it isn't as spotlighted. I do feel that Chelsea has been a bright light on all these different shows. So no, she hasn't been in the main event and all that, but she's she added something show, fun. But... <laughs> I mean, yeah, she has she won at all. I don't know, but you know, she she's really been a fun part of wrestling in the last year. So I have to shout her out and her return at the Royal Rumble. You know, she wasn't. I think maybe she was in there ten seconds from what. Uh, what I something like that. Seen, something like that. But I mean, look, she could be in more than that. She she could she could only go up from there, right, Mari? Sure. Maybe eleven seconds this year. Sure. Uh, so next up, we have campiest wrestler of the year. Oh. Um. The, can't we say camp? We mean high drama, right? Right, Matt. Sure. We mean like, we, we yeah. do. We do. Peacocking and all of that. We, good well, stuff. we mean that. We mean that. And not just like from a visual perspective, yeah. but like from a character perspective yeah. as well. Uh, so, so let's just get into, into who these campy people are. And by the way, but, like, do you want to go with the first person? Yeah. First up is Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah, Shotzi sure. has had like a, a very interesting year with you know, um, going up against damage control, shaving her head, as we all know, for a good cause, supporting her sister's cancer journey to coming back with a character that's like supposed to be like kind of broken. And it, 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 it's high camp. It mm-hmm. works sometimes and it doesn't work other times. Like um, we talked, I think we talked about one of her promos uh, or maybe we didn't get a chance to, Uh-oh. but one of her promos before, um, survivor series you know it kind of kind of went off the rails a bit but she does have the personality to kind of to to still do it to put it out there to be that crazy kooky kind of person so i definitely think she belongs here for a a campiest wrestler she is an interesting one for sure and I, i have to say her biggest moment or one of her biggest moments was the feud with Bailey this year, mm-hmm. which was mixed in with like five other feuds happening at the same right. time with women on SmackDown, but it was good. And it resulted it good, in her yeah. ultimately shaving her own head entirely. As mm-hmm. you mentioned, Mari, which we got to see a bit of that and Shotzi's an interesting one. Like I, I feel like we, have yet we definitely have yet to see like the best of Shotzi at this point but mm-hmm. you know some of the I want to be nice 
because I do like Shotzi. Just some of the in-ring stuff is sometimes clunky or slipperier than mm -hmm. it, it can and should be. And so, you know, we'll see if they really, like, strap the rocket to her. But she is camp. That's for sure. I mean, Mari, you shared the video of them entering at Survive at yeah at War Games Survivor Series, mm -hmm. full on camp. She's just quirky, kooky all over the place. We love we love that. Right. Next up, Asuka came back from like a little brief hiatus. She came back to the Royal Rumble. We talked about this. We talked about her new character, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which led to. Her eventually, um, not at WrestleMania, but eventually taking the belt off of Bianca. We talked about how, like, we th we thought her character was good, but we wanted it punched up a little bit. But mm -hmm. Asuka herself is just so damn camp. And since she's joined Damage Control, yeah. I mean, just amazing. Just putting it on with, with her and Kairi Sane as the Kabuki Warriors. I mean, just mm -hmm. Asuka is high drag to a T. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Honestly. I mean, yeah. And look, if I had to give anything like in her, I don't know, to take points away from Asuka, it's just that she has always been phenomenal. She's mm -hmm. always been incredible. She's always been super campy. I think the difference this year, though, is that they gave her more opportunities to shine she right. actually held the championship and had mm -hmm. like a bunch of segments where she shined including with and, and mainly i'd say actually with the mist as mm -hmm. a huge part of her character so yeah, this is great nothing, i mean like oscar's full-on camp especially when she dances around i need more of yeah. that in 2024 <laughs> yeah her we talked about it but the run-up to the, um SummerSlam was so good between her and Charlotte and Bianca mm -hmm. and then the surprise cash in at SummerSlam with EO like it's just been a really good year for Asuka mm -hmm. um, next up we have Seth Rollins I mean uh, Mr. What? Peacock himself I mean <laughs> Mr. I Peacock can. himself Honestly, it's it's always like, what is he gonna come out in? I do want to say um, this year, like I I think he deserves to be on this list, but I do want to say I think this year he might have. I th I feel like he kind of turned. Mm, look at me. I said he kind of toned it down a bit. Look at him. Look at him in the. <laughs> Hopefully, you're Her. watching us on YouTube on the Rafa uh, podcast YouTube page. But Wait, I mean, he's just I he like the Elton John of WWE. He's just so good and so charismatic, and he can turn it on and off. Um, like he, he can get serious when he needs to get serious, but he can be funny when he needs to be funny. Uh, what reminded me of this year is when he was like brawling in those big red boots. For no oh my reason. gosh, <laughs> not the boots. boots. I forgot deep, about the boots. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about those. Seth Rollins is so good. God, he's he is he is he's the definition of camp in WWE, if you ask me, he honestly. Truly is. Yeah. Just with, like, not only his looks, but his character. But mm -hmm. to your point, he does have this ability to switch gears into mm -hmm. a more serious tone, which is great. Like, you want a versatile character, versatile yeah. performer. So maybe this hasn't been his goofiest year, but I think that's a good thing. But, yeah, the, those boots, those red moon boots Hello. were kind of unpredictable. Those yeah. were awesome. Bring them back. Actually, I wish he wrestled in those. He That's he something. was what was he? I think he was on like Miz TV or something like that, and he he did a few he did a, a few contact stuff in there. I was like, I don't want him to wrestle in those because I don't want him to break his ankle. I don't know what kind of support art support. I mean, that <laughs> yeah, I see. I would assume that maybe it's the opposite, like um, it's like it's too tight. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, That's true. <laughs> it just yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Those are look. Uh, I want those boots. I don't have any moon boots. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have LA Knight. I think LA Knight <laughs> has really taken the crowd by storm. I don't think his version of camp is really like in the outerness of it. It's yes. how he holds himself and his talking and all of that. And I think um, this has been a, a really good good year for him. I, I'm pretty sure we talked about it at uh, uh, I want to say it was for SummerSlam. Both of us, we like kind of connect to LA Knight, but it's not like like big for us am right. i am i misinterpreting yeah but no, I, I i right. think i think he's i think he's so good and nowhere do you do you get the camp then when um the the mountain dew pitch black match that him and bray yeah. wyatt had um 
unfortunately, uh, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt, who mm-hmm. unfortunately passed away while we were on break. But mm-hmm. LA Knight's willingness to get in there and stand toe to toe with Bray Wyatt in that storyline and be just ultra campy was like one of the highlights of the of the year. I I think sure. Um, Sure. Mm -hmm. And the the least campy thing about him is that he is not received by the fans as campy, if you know what I mean. Like people think he's so cool, which yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. That's a that's a conversation for another day. But I mean, like the people take him seriously and they love everything about him. But he is just the campiest. He's so camp. His promo, he is one of the campiest promos out there. And Honestly. you know what? And, and I mean, we didn't include him under glow up of the year, but mm-hmm. because he's under this category, but you could argue that, I mean, best based yeah. on this list, like high camp, high, high levels of camp amongst yeah. the list here, just because he had such a glow up. Now, the only thing against LA Knight for me is that he really shined in the middle of the year and then toward the end of the year that is true. a bit more quiet mm-hmm. but again i don't think that they've given up on him there's just a no. lot of moving pieces right now yeah the they year. have very that they have a lot of talent to try and figure out what to do with and i mean you know good good problems that could turn into bad problems <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and finally, timeless Tony Storm. Tony Storm's uh, timeless gimmick on AEW. Honestly, <laughs> we don't talk about it enough, but it's no. absolutely flawless. To be quite honest, uh, I've I've watched her promos. the The fact that she just be kicking her shoes off and people like pop for her revealing her feet is like <laughs> what? The I mean, I just don't know. I don't think she's. I don't think she's profiting on that enough, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> the commitment to the accent, the the black and white. I love all of it. I truly love all of that. Uh, it's almost like a return to like uh, the vaudevillians, you, you know? Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to be referenced. Right. But I mean, I... But oh, like, gosh. but better. Yeah. She's doing it in a in a much better from way. A and, visual, yes. From a visual yeah. standpoint, yeah. they, I don't think ever really felt or understood that character how yeah well you know, they, they there are elements of yeah. hollywood and everything else they, yeah. they had a bit of that and it was built into their entrance and everything they were else, better on but, nxt yeah but and tony then... storm tony storm timeless tony storm mm-hmm. i would say is untouchable she in aew amazing. from this perspective and yeah. This is the type of thing that I wish AEW had more of. Just and maybe just more Tony Storm. Like I was just Honestly. watching her on the after show press conference from AEW World's End about a week or two ago, mm-hmm. maybe a week and a half ago. And wow, like she is in character the whole time. The whole she, time. she just throw any questions at her the whole you know, time shoot questions and she will bat back with the kayfabe response exactly you gotta i her. watched i watched one of her AEW promos and yeah. um i i don't know which i can't remember what night but literally the interviewer is asking her questions and she's naming like hollywood stars from the 1950s as somebody who is a like a historian who loves history to hear her reference Fatty Arbuckle in a promo was like one of the funniest things to me ever. Like, I was like, this joke is so funny. I don't know how many people get it, but it is hilarious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things. Yeah. 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 You know what? Oh, man. Tony Storm. I wish this is one of the people who makes me wish that we watched more AEW, but then I think we'd right. be disappointed that it wasn't the Tony Storm show. So, right. you know, but he's <laughs> yeah. awesome. And, and by the way, I will say on our break, there are a few people, mostly women in AEW, who oh, I was just like, let me, let me cue up these videos. Let me watch and catch up on what they're doing. Tony Storm was one of them just because mm-hmm. she, she has such buzz around her on social media mm-hmm. now too, but I mean, talk about reinventing your career um, in the campiest, the campiest of ways. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, I, I think for me, I think she gets this, this 
award here. Y- yeah, she's she gets it's the t- award. It's hard. It's a tough too. category, but I think she she brings it all when it comes to camp. She is it all, Mari. She is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. Next up, we have awesome. Shock Return of the Year. Oh. Oh my gosh! Shocker. They're back. Shocker. Um. I mean, we cannot be remiss. We talked about it when it <laughs> happened. We will talk about it again here. Mercedes Monet making her her like uh, it, 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 the return to wrestling <laughs> over on Wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom money. for um yeah for Stardom and her subsequent you know uh, uh, women's um, championship. You know, all of it was just so good. I I missed. I really missed seeing her wrestle, and even though it was a short time before her her unfortunate injury in, in the summer, um, I think that she did an amazing time in in what she with what she had in the in the matches that she had, in the matches mm-hmm. that she wanted to have in Japan and stuff like that. So, I um. It, it was a shock for me because we just didn't know where she was going to go. And then she turned up stardom. Uh, Mercedes. I, uh, this is a great category for her to be in because unfortunately mm-hmm. she did face an injury that had her out most of the for year, of the unfortunately. Year. Yep. But even then, even when she was injured, we saw her tease showing up at AEW. We still don't yep. freaking know where we she'll show no up. up. We really don't know, especially with she'll probably be she, she'll be on this month. award next year. This <laughs> oh, she she better be she better be. She, better be. Uh, she can have all the awards honestly if she yeah. wants them, um, especially with this new look, like the can- very campy in some mm-hmm. ways. I don't know if she's like she's camp. She's very serious. It's very serious about um it, everything that she is, but it's like just, just been... the, a bleached blue slash orange um slash well, she kind changes of it up. hair. And you know, she changes up all the time. She, and she changes even it up all the time. Well, so if you want to talk about her shock return, there was the debut, which had that look, but then she had her match return where she was wearing the um the like Hana um, memorial type or memorializing Hana mm-hmm. who unfortunately like is no longer with us, but just honoring her love of women's wrestling, Japanese women's wrestling. So, you know, we love Mercedes. She could, she could show up anywhere doing anything. She could show up at my local neighborhood target working there and that would win the award next year. Yeah, I I think that it's just been like she's been able to express herself a little bit differently. Yeah, know? I so I I, I that's yeah. what I think of when I think of her like her new debut or return. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so let's go on. Let's move on because I, I don't. We could we could keep we going. Could literally go. <laughs> yeah, and we're not trying to do that. <laughs> Next up, I mean, her sister. Partner in crime, Trinity. Trinity showed up at Impact, and oh my God, she like Trinity showed up at Impact. The, the way that it, they embraced her, the way she became champion, and then her championship reign that she's had basically all year. My God, the the matches that she had, one in particular that we're highlighting here, her versus Sunny Kiss. I mean. Just like wrestling is fun, guys. Like uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? People forget like wrestling is fun, and tr- it, I think Trinity exactly. And I think Trinity had to go to impact in order to remember that for herself, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I've I felt like her her reign so far has just been her enjoying herself and getting back into it. So mm-hmm. the the return of her showing up there, I was I was you know, we were gobsmacked, but I think it was the absolute perfect fit for her. Yeah, especially because there are and have been rumors really yeah. Al- yeah. almost since when she left of her return yeah. to WWE. They're like, oh my gosh trinity or naomi she'll come crawling back like we just know she'll be here and the fact that she could be the champ and shining so much in impact wrestling now tna again 
Uh, mm. The fact that she could shine so much in TNA, TNA, we have to like adjust. They literally, I mean, this month they are going back to the TNA branding. So, oh my Jesus, can't keep up, can't keep up. No. But no, but you know what? It, I think the T in TNA should stand for Trinity, and at this rate, she's she's making sure that that's true. The corny, right? A little bit, but it's fine. It works. It <laughs> works. Um, okay. So I'm not gonna okay. lie. Who? My problematic fave came back. Oh, uh, <laughs> Nia Jack showed back up at the Rumble, and then twice, we, yeah. twice. <laughs> she showed up twice. Like it's okay. Mari, <laughs> I just realized that she had two shock returns. She had two shock returns, yeah. Wow. That's actually kind of iconic. It is. She showed up at the Rumble, and then she showed up, um, what was it, like later in the summer or something like that? I, like, I would say like Septem- September, September sometime. Yeah, yeah. We were we were off by the time she, she came back. And immediately, well, no, we weren't. We, we were still talking about her, like her promo work and stuff like that. Immediately went after Big Back Raquel. Uh, <laughs> started a feud with most of the roster, <laughs> and then finally, um, could like finish her feud with not finished because i don't think they're finished but like resume the feud with yeah. becky lynch that was f- five years in the making because they kept yeah. missing each other after she broke Be- becky's nose and it sh- i'm sorry i don't i get it i get it i get I people do. do not like her i understand that i'm sorry she's a problematic fave of mine i i no. said it before and i've said it from the beginning i love big strong women who could just throw their weight around and beat just up and <laughs> when you do that as a yes. bad guy it's perfect it's absolute perfection to me she's the perfect heel and her and becky's uh feud amazing they had a amazing match at day one i that technically the technically doesn't count because that's here in 2024 but Mm -hmm. i think nia Jax has had an amazing return after she came back twice (laughs) she doesn't say two does it count for more points i don't know if we have (laughs) yeah Yeah. uh does it count for more points that she returned twice because the the rumble return was solid like she she made it back Uh, correct me if i'm wrong but didn't she come pretty close to winning Oh, she beat Be- Becky. No, I up. mean, I I mean the Rumble. Oh, the Rumble. Week. Don't give me a close lie. Enough. Close, she was in it, so close yeah. enough. Uh, but you know what? I I'm just saying that brings her a little bit closer to winning this award. If you ask me, twice mm-hmm. in a year. How do you shock people twice in a year in the same company? Think yeah. about it. Exactly. Uh, so, um. <sighs> Shout out to her. I love it. Uh, I, I really do hope she's listening right now. I don't care. I I know people just I I know people don't like her. I get it, but I I do I I do like her. Um, but the, she's, I like her as a wrestler. A great, she's a um, great heel. Like she's yes, a as solid a heel. heel, and oh they need God, that. Heel. They need that. Wrestling exactly. Needs that. Wrestling needs that. Exactly. Um, and I feel like we got to talk about one of the biggest returns. In wrestling, who is yeah, who, who CM Punk? CM oh, I didn't Punk. know that's who you're gonna. Say. I yeah. actually did not know that's who you're about to say. Believe it or not, Mari. CM Punk returned to everybody's shock at the end of Survivor Series. He just came out to his music, but he's been like doing the the promo tours on Raw and SmackDown. I mean, CM Punk is back. Matt, thoughts? He is back, and look. Hell he, CM Punk had a hell of <laughs> he had a hell of a year. Speaking of hell freezing over, mm-hmm. he was. Let me just track. Let me see if I can track this. So Uh-oh. he was basically in late 2022 uh, suspended or something like that from AEW because of mm-hmm. brawl out and the fight there. Yes, from AEW, and then he returned 
sort of as a surprise, but as a big tease around the launch of the Collision Show, which was in June this year. And I do not know how many days he lasted back in AEW, but that man was fired and gone. And so when he returned to WWE for Survivor Series, like people didn't expect it. Nobody expected it. And that's the thing. The rumors kept coming up about CM Punk, but the reality is there were no rumors saying that he was going to come back. In fact, they were saying the opposite. So we really were swerved there. I did not think that we would get CM Punk. It's hard for me, Mari, because I just feel like I need something like working against this as one of the top shock returns. Because it is huge, but it also is CM Punk. So, you know, what? Like, exactly. What like, it's like, it's, it's, they did this perfectly. Like, yeah. we had no idea he was coming back. I mean, like you said, there was rumors, but we, it was, it was always up in the air. And he comes back. And I think, I think who I really want to give what, like, why I'm even interested is Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins did a great job of working the hell out of all of us. Um, immediately at Survivor Series, he's like yelling at Punk, like, what are you doing here? Like him just talking about how he doesn't want to work with Punk. Him and Punk um, confronting each other. Like Seth Rollins is making me like want this feud. You know what I'm saying? And if we get Punk versus Rollins at WrestleMania, you know, I will be excited for it because of Seth Rollins, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I like I have said it on here before, CM Punk, he I was not I I was not watching wrestling during his original time, so I have no nostalgia attached to him. So I'm I'm glad that there are a lot of fans who are excited for him to be back here in WWE. And so far he hasn't created a ruckus here. So um I'm I'm I will it. say I will say I really I was just looking on my bookshelf behind me Mari for um the book by CM Punk's wife AJ Lee oh yeah AJ Mendez uh AJ Brooks I don't know what she goes by these days actually now that I mention it uh but you know what I look I love her I love her and if anything I'm okay with the rumors and with the discussion that like with Punk back, does that mean that she will come back? I I swear I just saw a clip of her wrestling like a oh, week really? ago. Or for it, it was for a show. It might have been on the show heels. So again, punk is tied with the show and all the things. But yeah, look, I'm just saying bring her back. But I don't have a problem. Truly with CM Punk, I don't like any of what happened in AEW. He did, he wrestled a lot in AEW. He put in a lot of effort in AEW. That was mm. not a good environment for him, clearly. And I'm really hopeful that we could go this entire year without any negativity, any drama, any trauma. Um, so look, I'm yeah, I'm pulling for Phil. I like a good redemption story, but mm -hmm. if he if he fucks this one up, Mari. Ugh. Where I mean, where is he yeah, gonna go? Where is he gonna go? Maybe exactly. to TNA. Maybe to TNA. But uh, I don't know. I'm ready for to see what he's got in store. And I do like how conservative they're being with how much they put him out there because he hasn't had he hasn't had a match yet on TV. No, he hasn't. Good. Next up, oh, one of my all time favorites. Um, <laughs> we talked about it a little bit at the Crown Jewel. Kyrie Sane showed up. Kyrie Sane showed up. Oh my God. Kyrie has been so good since her return. Like, I love, I never thought that like a bad girl Kyrie Sane would do it for me, mm -hmm. but it absolutely does it for me. I don't think she was, I don't think she was ever truly heel on her first run with WWE. No. Yeah. So no. this, yeah. So this run, I mean, phenomenal. I love just the lackadaisical, like, Oh, I love it so much. Every time I see Kyrie, I'm like, I, I'm so glad she's back. I love how vicious she is now. Because yes. when I think of Kyrie, I think of, well, one, I do think of uh, Mercedes Monet and their, their little their um, match. match and their program their earlier match. this year. <laughs> their little match. Uh, it was just I was, their little, little program. <laughs> it wasn't much of like a few, but yeah. uh, their, their big match. But you know, I also think of Kyrie with the captain wheel and the yeah. captain hat and 
that was never for me. Yeah, that was it had cool. a limit. That was a little quirky, mm -hmm. a little quirk, too quirky. It just felt like beyond wrestling in some ways. But this is, this is a good version of Kyrie. So and good. but this is the thing where there are so many incredible women on the roster. I just wonder how and when Kyrie will bust out and shine. Is Kyrie winning the Royal Rumble? I don't know. I don't know. I just probably am the first person to say that. But. I mean, I do want to see her shine because she is awesome. And, and she especially mm -hmm. showcased that in stardom. Exactly. Um, so I, out of these, I, I feel like we're like kind of obligated to give CM Punk the, the yeah, award let's here. Just, because ooh. it truly was a shock. Because we like, we truly didn't know he's come back. Yeah, we would be wrong to not give him the shock return of the year award. But I mean, honestly, the the thing about this is like this award feels more factual factual than emotional like we are not yeah <laughs> we're not giving him like the we're giving everyone else like a bow a plaque all that stuff we're just sending cm punk like a piece of paper maybe a napkin with a congratulations written on it in pencil that's about all he deserves so and exactly. you know what Oh, dra drag us. It's fine. Not everyone's a CM Punk fan. And I think, you know, these last two years especially have probably proved why he well, why he's a little bit um overrated. But I should stop while I'm ahead before I get dragged by the punk, the punk heads. Well, uh we're let's take a break. Halfway oh. through the awards. Yeah, look at that. So uh we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right. We got to get to feud slash storyline of the year. Ooh. Yeah, which I think this is a good year for some, some very good storylines and feuds. Let's start off with Becky and Trish Stratus. I think this one we definitely covered in depth um, on our on our last uh, season because it was just honestly amazing. I think Becky versus Trish, the way that they, they seamlessly moved into it from like the Lita stuff to you know trish costing becky and then trish uh, absolute heel trish I've, I've talked about it 20 million times on this podcast but i love heel trish you know the zoe stark stuff of it all but finally culminating in, in the cage match i mean this feud really was everything to me <laughs> like yeah. last year it really to, to see trish come back and do a run like this was just amazing and i didn't i didn't know we were going to get it no. And it's it's funny because the way that we really entered Trish showing up was through Lita showing up mm -hmm. while I want to say Becky and Bailey were having a cage match on Raw. And so Lita returned and that was a thing. Yeah. And then Trish showed up a couple weeks later to even the odds leading into WrestleMania. Who would have thunk it that we would get such a huge like run from Trish Stratus here? Exactly. I was not... I was not prepared at all for this, but I am just so grateful for Trish because she is 48 years old. And I point oh, that yeah, out because not only is she 40, like there are, there are a number of wrestlers who are active who are in their forties, but look yeah. at the amount of time that she has been off in a way. And Trish really like people say mellow don't miss Trish don't, don't miss it, on the mic, yeah. in the ring, any of it. And, you know, the only thing about this feud that was off-putting was that it didn't get that spot at SummerSlam. It was bumped from SummerSlam. Yeah, it was. The audacity. Yeah. The, like, the, how dare That's they? True. But you know what? I, I think that, like, I will never forget Trish versus Becky in the cage. Um, and then Zoe Stark attacking Trish after and all that fun stuff. Like, it was... Trish really did it. Thank you, Trish. And Becky, of course, has had an amazing year all around. I should also yeah, say that. Of but, um, yeah. but, you know, Becky is like consistently an all star. And we saw that all year, all year round. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I don't know if I can be a bigger fan of this feud. I know. Um, next up, we have the Bloodline storyline, which. Oh, are you yawning right now? Yeah, I was yawning. I yawned into a thinking. <laughs> Thing in case, <laughs> because like it's kind of like you we said it we kind of yes. cued, cued it up because at the start of the year in WrestleMania like 
Ooh. you know, it was still going strong. Like we were still run, we were still with it. And yeah. then after WrestleMania, I, I think especially after the introduction of the um the heavyweight title as well, mm. you know, which is a good thing. I'm not I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It was a good thing because there was, we were able to get stories away from the belts that Roman were kind of holding hostage. The bloodline storyline, it got good. And then the Jay and Jimmy stuff happened. And then Jay leaves. And it hasn't been as great to me these last mm-hmm. few months. I just think it's hard, it's hard to sustain like a four-year storyline, especially when they 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 started out so good and they kind of peaked around the the second to third yeah. year, you know? So what do you think? There's there the, we 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 clipped an hour and a half of the the bloodline story in 2023 as as a clip for the week. So maybe I gotta go back and watch that, you know? Or not, you know? That, <laughs> that could also be the case. I you know it's really tough because if one, if we were just talking about Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns and the storyline between them, which of course is part of the Bloodline storyline, and if that extended throughout the whole year, and at that same quality, like 1,000% for me, the Bloodline storyline is the greatest. The problem is, though, that the Bloodline story has been really great like 2023 truth be told in my opinion was not the best year of the bloodline storyline right. i mean wh- like where's roman where was roman most of this year yeah in fact, like that's a that's a whole other conversation in question but when you peak with the story at royal rumble where or Sammy, wrestlemania or but even then like that the cody, high wrestlemania we shifted to cody more mm-hmm. and then cody lost which people Mm -hmm. were shocked by also Mm -hmm. um so you know this is a hard one for me because it just got really dry i will say honestly the bloodline storyline wasn't for me the for most of it but they were doing such a great job especially with the sammy stuff and i was into it including like how they showcased an interview with his wife backstage i remember this from like from um, youtube and they like it was just so deep it was so deep. They were in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the Us- Jimmy. Jimmy couldn't make it to Canada <laughs> allegedly, but I think he oh, might have yeah, yeah. Up anyway. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But but you know, it it did really take a nosedive, definitely after Mania. So not not the greatest. Not the greatest yeah. in my opinion. Right. I agree. It it it's just kind of losing steam. Hopefully, it'll pick back up. There's not going to be a fatal four way at Royal Rumble with Roman, Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles. But I, mm-hmm. I don't, and then The Rock came back to kind of, you know, nestle that, that head of the table type Something thing. Something so, at the head of the table. Yeah. You know what? And by the way, Rock, earn your keep. Like, I get yeah. it. You are The Rock. But where have you been? Where have you been? What like what? When's the last time The Rock wrestled in WWE? Was it ten years ago? Mm-hmm. Probably he probably has had a like two minute. He match had like somewhere. a yeah yeah yeah. Mm. But you know, obviously there was the Cena and Rock saga that went over a couple years. I'm excited to see The Rock because he's The Rock. But damn, you like uh. Yeah, like when we we talked about this with LA Knight already, that there's just so much in the mix that LA it Knight is. kind of falls down the list. And I I do feel like WWE is trying to figure out how to fit in all of the pieces, especially Cody and The Rock. Yeah. And with Roman, like how it'll be really interesting when we're at Mania to to know what those main events and know what the match card is looking like for each of the nights. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely speculate as we get like more. Mm-hmm. Um, more information next up Bianca and Charlotte versus damage control. I put Bianca and Charlotte because, um, it was mm. Bianca, Charlotte, and Asuka, and then Asuka <laughs> turned on them, and it was like they couldn't find a friend to save their lives. Um, but it, it culminated in um, the uh, war games match. Uh, oh, I, you, I didn't think you were going to say, I thought you were going to say the bodysuit war of 2023. Yeah. Bianca and Charlotte's bodysuit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, um, before. Best match of the night. 
in in terms of the women's war games at Survivor Series. Honestly, this past year for sure. Honestly, easily, easily. the women's war game match was so good at Survivor Series. I mean, like, I was, I loved every second of it. I loved the storyline of it. Like, Be- uh, Bailey kept rescuing all of her team members. Like, her team members would get would get pinned and she'd come and rescue them and rescue them and Trash. rescue them. Yeah, but then the moment that Bailey is getting pinned, nobody comes to rescue Bailey and Bailey takes the pin and then we're like, Bailey, they're going to be mad at Bailey. Are they going to turn on Bailey? And I, and this is what it spun out to that we're kind of, I'm kind of waiting to see when they're going to turn on Bailey, you know, and, and we'll talk about what we think about the Rumble and all that stuff. But this yeah. storyline, ha- like the way it morphed, like Bianca and Charlotte versus Damage Control, like, um, like over the like after the Asuka Bianca uh Charlotte match into Asuka betraying them into you know Kyrie coming back, them finding Shotzi. They're like, okay, Shotzi, Bailey's been <laughs> bad to you over the past. And then me and Yim. It was just so mm-hmm. good. I loved how they 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 weaved all of the women's storylines together so that it made sense that once by the time we came to the Survivor Series, it made sense that all of those women were on those sides of those teams and you didn't feel like they were just thrown together. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. I and you know, I am to your point about Bailey, I'm excited to see where the story with damage control goes. Like mm-hmm. I like that this unit, this new version of damage control with Asuka integrated it exists. And then also Kyrie, you know, that that exists, that that's a thing. I would really love to see. I know we're not doing predictions or hopes and wishes, but I would really love to see Bailey turn on them, realizing that she deserves better. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Mari, if we'll ever be so blessed to get Bailey in the hugger gimmick back. But if I get that in my days i'll be i'll be very thankful i love bailey now i, I love her now. i don't know if i want the hugger gimmick i want i want like a i want an aggressive but... hugger you know what i'm saying like just really good in there mm-hmm. with the hugs she was she was so huge back then uh and the kids yeah. these days don't even know how good she was back in the nxt days but you know a boy can dream right mari yeah, you can. I just, I, I, I think we'll, like, I think we'll definitely get babyface Bailey, and Ooh, that's what I think yeah, I'm. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't need the hugger gimmick. I just no. want babyface Bailey, and I think we are going to. I think we really are going to, going to get it. Um, and it's going to be even better to see how she, like, works this new kind. Of, like, that's what I'm, I'm waiting. I want a new gimmick because well, so Bailey is so good at at it you know maybe she could give out a couple of hugs though you know she could leave the headband and the bright <laughs> colors and the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men behind <laughs> but yes i'm with you i'm with you yeah uh next up judgment day versus everybody i mean judgment day has we we've been saying it has single-handedly just been running raw for <laughs> the past year raya has absolutely almost no competition over there in the, mm-hmm. the women's division that she's in she's in men's business uh it led to the the men's war games match at survivor series this year which was like uh-huh. it was good it was all right but like i you know i'm i wasn't nearly as invested in it as i was in um the women's match and i think they lost again like I, i'm again i'm yeah, I'm like Judgment Day. Truly, they need to get more wins. Like it's weird to say they need to get more wins when they're like currently champions and stuff like that. But it's like yeah. they need more wins, man. Well, yeah, and you look, Priest won Money in the Bank, and yeah. what have they done with that? Finn, I mean, that was really the peak. I have to say, around July, August, where Finn mm-hmm. was competing with Seth, they had that feud which was just constantly heating up, and Rhea. Has just been literally dominating the entire not only raw women's division, but just raw. She's she's just she's it. She is like the moment she is raw. She is WWE for me in so many ways. Cause she touches on everything to your point. Mm-hmm. And then Dom, Dominic Mysterio. I mean, regardless of what people might say around how much they might or whether or not they're like pumping in booze sometimes he's just so great and i like that he's finally falling into his own because dom kind of used dom not kind of dom used to be really dry 
Um, but he's anything, anything but that. He's just so greasy right now. I love that for him. He's so greasy. <laughs> like, he's so yeah, greasy. like slippery. <laughs> slippery, yeah. Just feel like yeah. it's like he needs a shower. Like he, yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, uh, and then <laughs> finally, final nominee. What's next? Uh, Gunter, uh, Gunter's historic icy title run. I mean, ooh, yes. He he smashed Honky Tonk's record. He's had match after match after match that has been just so incredibly good. I think my favorite feud for him was the Chad Gable feud, the the Chad Gable series. I think they yeah. had like the series of the three matches, and I mean, it was so good. And I I, I feel like they did it too soon. They did it too soon because they did they did the Gable the Gable um feud right before he was gonna hit the the mark, and so we knew. So I I knew I was like they have to let him hit the mark. So. That's what kind of let it down for me because I feel like it really should have, like Gable should have been the one to to dethrone him. I'm not even sure what they're doing with him right now, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, I don't even think I don't even think he was on Raw, but I'm not sure. I gotta I gotta go back and see. But like, yeah, th- this whole that whole entire run was phenomenal in 2023. Yeah, you know, I mean, the only knock against that, I don't know if I would categorize that so much as, like, it is a storyline, but he is, the. it's so notable that he is the storyline because he's Mm -hmm. been so dominant, and his dominance is the storyline. So Mm -hmm. it is very different than a lot of what we've talked about um, in terms of Bianca and Charlotte versus Damage Control or the Bloodline storyline especially when it comes to like sammy and mm-hmm. oh yeah he Ko just had a baby that's why i'm sorry uh, I didn't you. Yeah, yeah i forgot i mean it's okay to have a baby um mm-hmm. so but and the, you know it, it's it's interesting he he's shy and so much but again he keeps going mari he's mm-hmm. not stopping and again this is part of where i'm so excited for us to get past wrestlemania because i think mm-hmm. that in that next year we're gonna see him continue to climb and climb and climb maybe hopefully to world championship levels um yeah. but only time will tell oh my Shout gosh remember that Kane banger Kane. that banger of a match at, at wrestlemania that, oh my god was it a three-way was it a three-way three yeah oh between her, him sheamus and um and drew drew it yeah, was so wow. good yeah it's it like really i feel like it really kicked everything off for me like i mean i know mm-hmm. he was like in the middle of the rain, but I felt like it, it like really, really like Mm -hmm. took it up to to the next level. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to choose, but yeah, so he's him and Jenny shout out to Jenny. They're, they're they're a a healthy baby boy. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Like you said, we don't know what's going to happen with with Gunter in, in a championship. Um, so this one's gonna be hard. So for feud storyline of the year, I think for me, I'm gonna go with Bianca and Charlotte versus Damage Control. I just Damn. like honestly, SmackDown was like I would it was much watch TV for me because I needed to know what the women were up to. I I loved that 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 feud, um, that storyline that's still still going. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, that was that was my favorite one. You know, in terms of a storyline that I think was pretty hot throughout that had, you know, a nice bow at the end that had great matches along the way, including on Raw, not just on pay-per-view, that had great merch along the way. Mm-hmm. I have to give it to Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Like, <laughs> do you know how mind-blowing that is? Can- yeah. Look, we knew everyone else was going to be around in 2023, but the fact that someone could just turn on their TV and see Trish Stratus looking like it's 2002 and right. wrestling like it's 2002 mm-hmm. and even better than she was back then. Like Trish hanging from the top of the cage like a like a maniac because she could have fallen off that that crap. <laughs> like they, there's so much. There's so much here. I have to give it to Trish versus Becky. Becky, again, just shout out to her for being reliably amazing. But Trish freaking Stratus. I I feel like, actually, I'll also say, because this was only a part of the year, I feel like this is also, like, a pretty underrated feud for what it was. But 
give me the highlight package of this any day and I'll enjoy it. I will also shout out beyond their cage match. I loved, there was a match I think that was Zoe Stark versus Becky on Raw in a street fight. And mm -hmm. I vividly remember that match. And that's a good sign for me versus the others where with a lot of what we've talked about, it just, it, it hasn't kept going up. Some of it stalled as we head into 2024, some bit, but um, you know that, you know, you know me, Mari, giving it to Trish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trish. Thank you for watching the wrestling wrap up. Yeah, I, I can't add any more to that. It was great. Um, so let's quickly get into our Woman of the Year awards. Ooh. I think we've kind of touched on a, a lot of these women so far. So, um, you know, we'll see where this takes us. Let's start off with Ray Ripley. I mean, Ray Ripley has, like we said, dominated the Raw Women's Division. Um, she's clearly like the leader of the Judgment Day now mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, it's like because because of like Finn and Damian and like this JD like like cross section. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like to R Rhea having to recruit Drew to help. Um, it it really is her her world and we're all kind of just living in it <laughs> you know what and it wouldn't like would you really have it any other way that's my You're question right. because Rhea ripley like it, everything's so great about her mm -hmm. she has the character mm -hmm. she i i feel like we might have seen less of this in 2023 weirdly but like she's not afraid of going head to like face to face with the men. I don't know. I'm just picturing her squaring off with Kevin Owens, but that was probably this year. Yeah. This was, and it was she also had like probably a thing with Seth Rollins Solo this year too. And, and Solo Sokoa. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I yeah, love yeah. that. I, I wish they would go even further with her and I'm hopeful that they'll go even further with her. I'm not saying in, you know, in the same way that they did with China, but mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of putting Rhea in matches with some of the men because I, I could see her holding her own, you know, and being dominant, especially depending on who she's she's going up against. So, uh, like, I have I have no notes. I have no notes for Rhea Ripley other than it, it's fascinating because she in character and out of character has kind of been doing the same thing, which is trying to have it all like she's trying to fight all the women and be the women's champion, but she's also trying to manage ju Judgment Day and be the leader of this group. And she's also keeping all the men in check. So, I mean, what what else could you say for Rhea? She's, I know. Exactly. And it's just like, well, who's next for her too? Like, who's next? To think. I think Goldberg. It's, I, <laughs> I would love to see her, uh, her and Naya go at it a little bit more. And I, but I, and I, and again, when this isn't the time to speculate for Rumble and, and Mania and stuff like that, mm. but I, I definitely think we're getting like a Becky Rhea, uh, Rhea uh, match too. Cause God. they, they had that stare down like so long ago, you know? But, you know, I will also just put out there that Rhea, was it the Saudi show that she just dominated all the other, all the other like, bigger women on yeah. the roster. I mean, and there was Zoe Stark, but then there was Naya, there was Big Back, Raquel, there was like... Oh, yeah, the, the fatal four-way or something like that? I think there were five of them. Five of them? Shayna, Shayna, Zoe, Shayna, Zoe, um, Naya, Raquel. Raquel. Yeah. And Rhea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and she just dominated that. Like, yeah. come on. And it is nice because in 2020. 2022 speaking of dominating she really did develop this dominatrix gimmick which was you know great and that's fun but she's a lot more than that and mm. i think she could be it feels weird to say but no it doesn't no she she should be the face of the company if she's not the face of the company i don't know if wwe is big on having a face of the company anymore but mm -hmm. she's she's up there as one of them for sure right exactly um, oh, and we have uh, we have other nominees to talk yes, about. We do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I a face of one of the faces of the company, uh, Bianca Belair. Yes, coming <laughs> out on her uh, with a hit Hulu show. Well, a hit, it's gonna a be new, a hit. It'll be, be it'll be a hit. It'll be a hit. <laughs> her new Hulu show. Yes. Um, 
I think Bianca had an amazing 2023. I mean, it of course it, I don't think it's going to be as good as her 2022 because I mean, Bianca has been having amazing years for the past like 3 years. But Bianca Correct. coming out of WrestleMania getting her third straight um singles win, I believe, out of WrestleMania, she has a streak going here and um but still eventually dropping the belt to Asuka after that phenomenal match between her and Io Sky. Um, and her just always being in the mix, like she, I think this year, what Bianca proved was, and, and she's done it previous years, but I really feel it's this year that really like stuck the landing because of, because she had been champion for so long. I think she truly proved this year that she did not need the belt to be a star. And I think that is massively important in any wrestler, WWE wrestler, any wrestler period that, um, you think is supposed to be a generational talent. And mm. I definitely think that Bianca is a generational talent and she's shown time and time again that either she's, even if she's the champ or not, she, she makes everything relevant. And contrary to what some people on the internet like to say, uh -uh. Oh, she's gotten boring. Oh, she needs character <laughs> change. Oh, blah, blah. She still gets some of the loudest pops in person. You know what I'm saying? That's so, the point. That's the point yeah. that I wanted to actually make because you look at the the very 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 stereotypical the very stereotypical thing that people say about John Cena, where the fans turned on him because he was this good guy that was like being quote unquote shoved down our throats. And I have heard that conversation in reference to Bianca. And people haven't turned on her. Like, she continues to get that support, that love, those reactions. And she deserves all of them. But I think it speaks to her evolution as a character where this year we have seen... I don't. We haven't seen heel Bianca for sure, but we have gotten the darker, more aggressive sides of Bianca here and there, just in defense of what's hers. Her Not only her championships, but, like, just her legacy and it's amazing like she she has incredible matches week in and week out she right. again has this show that's coming out so i mean uh, unfortunately i guess i wouldn't even say unfortunately like you know she's so accomplished and great that this this is not her best year this was not her best year yet but mm -hmm. you know not every year could be your best year if you're that great <laughs> it was a pretty damn good year. Yeah, exactly. And then um she I think and then she took some time off to to film that Hulu show. So mm -hmm. uh, Bianca has just been doing amazing. I think um the road to WrestleMania will be very interesting for her. And especially since uh dang, I don't I can't remember if we mentioned it or not, but Charlotte blew out her knee in a match yeah. against EO. She completely tore like all of the ligaments, like all of the ligaments, girl said, "See you later." That was a match. That that match. Yeah. Um, that was not not great. Not great. It wasn't a great match. I don't know what happened. Like there was so many miscues. Um, but so Charlotte is now out um, for the foreseeable future, and we were pretty sure we were all gearing up to get Bianca versus Charlotte at Mania. So it'll be really interesting to see where they pivot. But again, I don't think. Everybody's like, oh, they might not, they better not put her in any of the title matches, blah, 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 blah. I don't think she needs to be in the title match. I don't think her versus Charlotte was ever going to be a title match, in my opinion. Um, people, the gall, like, yeah, she could, she could be wherever she wants in that card and it's going to be awesome. I don't think that it would be a bad thing if she's in a title match at Mania at all. But I do one thing I do think is interesting is I do wonder how much WWE is going to lean into, you know, the the fact that they do have this show coming out, Love and WWE, mm -hmm. with her and Montez. Like, will we see a mixed tag match? Obviously, not mm. usually the most exciting thing or the best thing, but I mean, there's so many options for Bianca. Is I love my a good point, mixed including tag. going to, I mean, yeah, love a good, love a good mixed tag, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll get one. But and we, we'll see. I mean, so Montez and um, uh, D'Angelo Dawkins, they're with uh, Bobby. Bobby, right now, they just got attacked by Scarlet Cross and AOP. So, like, if 
Bianca needs to go over there to even the score with Scarlett. I could see that happening. Now, would I want that to happen? Not really. I can't. But, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but I, I agree. I I think they could really stick her anywhere. Um, mm. and, and I don't see them like opposing that. We, you know, we we might have a whole bunch of returns coming up in the rumble, so maybe um she can build towards a match with, with somebody who returns. You know, oh my so. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. It 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 because now I'm freaking out because there's so many options. Are we gonna yeah. get Bianca versus Naomi at Mania? Mm. AKA Trinity. We'll we'll talk more about this as we lead up to the rumble as for we, sure. Exactly. But I'll take I'll take whatever we get with Bianca at this point. Uh next up we have EO Sky, the the women's champion, she's been the uh what which which belt is this? Is this this is the women's oh don't do that, Mari, no. championship? Yeah, this is the, the women's sure, heavyweight championship. It. it is because <laughs> Rhea has the world, so the confusing. world women's yes, uh, <laughs> um and she's she's had it since uh SummerSlam, and you know, it's easy to kind of think that EO's in the the back of the like the damage like she's the champion but she's not like at the forefront she's she's working hard with the group but i still think she's had a, a really good 2023 she solidified a group around her in order for her to keep this title and this i think this wrestlemania season is definitely going to revolve around how she keeps this group who you know i i i, I think sure. she had a really good a, a decent year I mean, I will say she won Money in the Bank, and yes, we didn't exactly. necessarily think that she was going to win exactly. that championship in the first place. And I will say, especially when we were watching EO after Money in the Bank leading up to her winning the championship, yes, she had this group around her, but she was doing it. She was a woman doing it for herself. Yeah, like, like she I said, was, that match she, was great. she had everything in her to... to you know, put the pieces together. In fact, there were moments when Bailey, when well, Bailey in particular, would sort of get in the way of of EO, you know, winning everything or shining. But mm -hmm. the bumbling heel that Bailey could be at times. We love Bailey, mm -hmm. right? But EO definitely took so many, went up so many notches this year, including just having that championship still having that championship mm -hmm. so i mean it was a great year for her for sure it, it, it is interesting though like i for me my mind actually goes back to backlash in puerto rico exactly. when she was facing bianca exactly. and where the crowd really uh, largely hat. turned on i mean pretty in a lot of ways turned on bianca and bianca mm -hmm. was sort of you know a little bit more aggressive a little bit more of the heel they the all they, yeah. they were mm -hmm. so behind eo and we can't forget that that was that was a hot moment and the hottest crowd of the year for sure hottest crowd of the year d mm -hmm. by far and i think mm -hmm. that that performance propelled her to the money in the bank to be quite honest yeah. and to where we are now so yeah eo you're right had had a, a pretty uh, phenomenal year in comparison and then uh, becky lynch i mean i don't i don't know what more to say about becky lynch and how good yeah she, she comes up a lot she comes up a lot uh yeah. and you know she's I mean, pretty campy she's she's glowed up in her own ways she had her own feud or storyline of the year uh a lot like, of things she she dealt with naya uh which is yeah. its own feud. Again, above um, above title, above title in so many ways. Exactly, exactly. Like and I was yet she had the another title person. On NXT. She dominated NXT. Yes, all of that. Another person who, <laughs> who did not need the title to to stay relevant. Uh, the amazing feud with Trish, the the feud, the the NXT her going back to get the NXT Women's Championship because it was the one championship that had eluded her in her career, while also her putting over younger talent. And then coming back to this this Nia Jax feud, her willing to take losses, like strategic losses, that makes sense mm -hmm. to me. I love mm -hmm. that. Like her her losing to Nia Jax made sense. I was like, oh my god, I I was I didn't I didn't know they were gonna pull the trigger on that. But Becky just being in just the all round great 
women's wrestler that she is is just who's shocked i'm not yeah. shocked <laughs> like 100 percent. i mean it i guess what's what's so interesting is becky has been in the conversation for i mean honestly a couple like five, years years, yeah. five, five years at least yeah five years but i mean five few, years, a few it's years. Five year I, anniversary of the the hit well, of them, yes, but as as a future Hall of Famer, like people, they've been even saying that stuff on commentary here and there. Like Actually, Becky is a future Hall of Famer; she's a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. So, I mean, this is another one where, if we look at what we talked about with Bianca, I mean, is this Becky's best year? Honestly, I can make the argument that this is Becky's best year. It wasn't the flashiest. She wasn't in the main event. It didn't have the most titles, but she did so much. She proved to be this renaissance woman in the women's division. Mm -hmm. And that's worth a lot. That's worth so much. What what are they going to do with that? It seems like this feud with Nia is going to go places, um, maybe all the way to Mania, but flawless. Like Becky. Becky Uh, Lynch is incredible. I like how she still stays so fresh. Yeah, she she does she does a great job at it. Um, I I think I I I cannot see it not being Rhea versus Becky some way at, at Mania. Um, we'll see. So I think like it's weird because all these women did so great this year, and honestly, we we had to like pare it down. We were about to add a whole bunch of people. <laughs> like, Mm-hmm. Like, you can make a case for Charlotte, you can make a case for Bailey, you can make a case for a lot of women this year. I just want to say, like, women's wrestling this year, especially in WWE, yeah, yeah, we're singling mm-hmm. it out, mm-hmm. especially in mm-hmm. WWE, has mm-hmm. been absolutely 100%. phenomenal. It has been amazing. Um, but I, I think mm-hmm. I think you gotta give it to Rhea because technically I think yeah. she has had the most dominating year, you know. Yeah, I mean, the only, yes, 100%. -hmm. Rhea is the woman of the year. We're not even saying that this is just woman in the women's division of the year. Because Mm -hmm. you could argue that Rhea hasn't had the most challenging experience with other women in the women's division this year. She's just been doing so much else. And I would say Mm -hmm. easily, she's the woman of the year. This is a really interesting group of women also that we signaled out for the women of the year because they they all have very distinct years from each other. Um, and again, Bianca and Becky um, were not holding the championships for the most, the better part of the year, which is interesting. Um, and yet they continue to shine. So I love it. But yes, mommy, mommy takes this one. Yeah. And That's finally. Cool. Yeah, yes. let's go. Man of the Year awards. And I mean, <laughs> we have to start with Man Dominic Year. Mysterio. If we're going to talk about mommy, <laughs> we got to talk about Poppy. Dominic uh, Mysterio, I do not care. I, I talk about it all the time. I think he, he is one of the main characters that elicits such a huge reaction. You can say what you want. You could say his mic is lowered. You could say, you know, they're, they're piping in the booze, mm-hmm. but. This man gets a reaction wherever he goes. Mari, I have a question for you with Dom. How how would you say that his 2023 compares with his 2022? It, it it's hard because his I think his 2022 was phenomenal because it was the rise of this character. Right now, I feel like we're at the peak of this character because they're they're at, they're at the power, they're in the power seat. So it is definitely mm-hmm. different. Um so it, it's it's hard for me because I, I want to say his 2022 was better because we were still getting to understand the character. Now that we know the character, I think the character is still just like one of the best things going. He's been what red hot you? all year. He's mm-hmm. been red hot all year. Um, and yeah, there was the rise of the character. That's when he that's when, you know, Judgment Day truly was like coming to its own with dom joining with ray and dom being a story and a couple a showmance if you will but if you will uh i this was this was like low-key an incredible year for dom like yeah he could definitely be man of the year just just everything with dom this year was phenomenal the north american title run 
well, yeah, that was part of it. That was part of it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they gave him that also elevated NXT. So you could see I that he's it. trusted by WWE to elevate NXT. Yeah, I, I honestly, and we're going to go through the rest of the names, but it is kind of fascinating that Dom is alongside all these other Some names. Some of the biggest names, you wouldn't, yeah. You wouldn't even think that on the surface, but then when you really think about it, it makes perfect sense that he's up there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I tr- I truly think so. Um, another name is Seth Rollins. I mean, the world heavyweight champion. He has proved to be a fighting champion. He has proved mm-hmm. to really like carry feuds on his back. I think his. I think the only thing that I've I've had a problem with it is like the dip in like serious feuds he's had you know but i feel that's picking back up he the the nakamura Mm -hmm. feud i think is great but it's being undercut by now this new this new cm punk feud you know Mm -hmm. um but but seth himself is he's like the he's literally the workhorse champion he's working 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 he's putting on these great matches he's keeping us entertained you know what i'm saying like he he put he put on a great war games match He's having a great year. I mean, he he is the in, inaugural kind of world champion right right now, you know. Because again, we're still kind of confused on the lineage of the belt. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, the one thing that's tough about Seth is honestly, for me, it's Roman because WWE mm-hmm. likes to decide when when to make Roman the featured spot, when to push everything around him. And then when Roman's gone, Seth shines even more. And I, I think that Seth's had a great year, but I do think that mm-hmm. he deserves even better. Um, also, I will say, and I, look, he, he's had some fun feuds, as you've alluded to. I don't know if it was this year or not that mm-hmm. Seth had his mini feud with Matt Riddle, but... I still think about Seth in a promo, <laughs> like just destroying. Oh right, that right, riddle. right. Yeah, yeah. I hope that was this year because I, I'm, I'm I can't count remember. To be quite honest, <laughs> honestly, it, but it, but it, the fact that it's memorable enough, like it, who cares? Like that speaks to the quality of Seth. I just think he. I wish he was the featured player, but again, maybe that's just not how WWE is is anymore. Um, but yeah, they they speed him up sometimes and they slow him down at other times. But he he always like brings one one hundred ten percent. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it you can never say anything bad about Seth. And again, like I said, he is for me going to be the draw for this this punk feud that I'm sure we're gonna get. Next up, we have Cody Rhodes. Uh, this year for Cody, very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. What, very what's interesting your gut reaction? Because you, it was so hot the first beginning of the year. I like you couldn't have told me that he wasn't going to win. Yeah, he won the run. He won the rumble after he came back from his his injury, his pectoral injury. I was mm-hmm. convinced he was going to beat Roman. He did not beat Roman, and then he goes immediately into this feud with Brock Lesnar, which we talked about it in like. I was, I'm like, yay, Cody, but I, you, it, I can't. <laughs> Brock Lesnar feuds don't, yeah. do not excite me, but he actually comes out on top in the Brock Lesnar, f- sure. Brock Lesnar feud. Um, yeah. So now he, he did, he, I think he had a mini feud with Shinsuke again. And then he got caught. He was, he was the tag team champions with Jay Uso for like two weeks or so something random. like that. It was so sure. random. So, yeah, I, so random. I, I think Cody's year has kind of been like a very roller coastery, very up and down. Um, but I think he still has managed it really well. And I don't think he's lost like any of his, like um, his, his, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> his, now, I, I don't want to say heat, but the opposite of his heat. Yeah, right. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I just want to see. Yeah, terms. his riz. Um, <laughs> his riz. He has so much riz. And, you know, yeah. actually, to that point, so, I mean, you mentioned the Brock feud, which wasn't great, but how that ended, I thought was so inspired with Brock totally unlike we've really ever seen him like shaking Cody's hand holding his arm up like at the Mm -hmm. end of Cody beating him which to me is like the ultimate rub when it comes to Brock yeah but 
my problem with Cody, in addition to the up and down of it all, they have really done what they can to protect him. Yeah. And that actually, to me, has felt like it's been at the expense of Seth Rollins. Like, a number of times this year, we've gotten the Seth Cody, ret- um, re- I'll call it the Seth Cody return match tease. Like, that feud picking up again has been teased. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. then they end up teaming together. And Seth, you know, Seth and Cody were positioned on the same level, even though Seth's the one with the championship. Then they had war games. And I felt like Cody was the leader of the war games team Mm -hmm. even though seth was was on that team you know cody was there teasing randy orton returning we haven't even talked about randy orton returning but oh um, yeah randy returning very fascinating very good for yeah good Mm -hmm. for him happy for him uh but yeah no cody cody's been in a weird spot i I think that's (laughs) for us to see you know it is what it is it is what it is exactly yeah ally He's, yeah, Randy Orton. <laughs> okay, no. He's an ally now. So good for him. Welcome that. back. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I, I, exactly. It's exactly because like Cody and Seth Ooh. are positioned as like the top baby faces on Raw. And as much as I would love to see them resume their feud, it was just a better feud when Seth was a heel. And it to me, it just doesn't, it kind of doesn't work now that Seth is like, you know such a such a good good face now so Mm. i agree again it's just they have so many top stars at the top of the card that it's it's Mm. it's proving to find very hard to figure out what to do with all of them um yeah please keep talking (laughs) oh no i mean i i have nothing else to say about cody i'm just thinking ahead to the last two people that we want to talk about here yeah um and do you uh are we going with yeah the next uh, one the is yeah yes the next one is the head of the table roman reigns who again it's like great like you had us in the first half of the year and it's just kind of went downhill from there and it's just it's sporadic um his sporadic appearances you know mm-hmm. um it it just feels like I'm they looking, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at to your point on the sporadic appearances to take a second there. Like he was on the Royal Rumble beating Kevin Owens. He was at Elimination mm-hmm. Chamber beating Sammy. He was at WrestleMania, WrestleMania, of course, beating Cody. And then he was at Night of Champions, uh beating K- KO and Sammy while teaming with Solo Sokoa. So we just had him showing up at pay-per-views. Again, money in the bank, he shows up. We see him at SummerSlam. We see him at Crown Jewel. But it it does feel like we just had a lot of absence from Roman this year. I don't know by my math. It it looks like, including the televised matches, that it might have been only about 10 matches that he had in 2023. Yeah, wow. not a lot. But, I, but even more, lot. like beyond the matches, he hasn't been a huge force in moving storylines forward mm-hmm. ever since, you know, mid this year. I was going to say ever yeah. since WrestleMania, but really since the. It's kind of like Jay. Up. Yeah. Exactly. Jay yeah. yeah. It, it's felt really weird. And, but they're, I do think they're, they're picking back up now. We got the Rock Tees. Uh, going into Mania, this is the season that they're going to pick everything with him back up. But you're right; it's it's unfortunate because we, I, I think we've said that we are we are big fans of the Bloodline storyline, but it now is like I I hope they can really land it and right the ship because it was so hot; it felt like it peaked so long ago that mm-hmm. maybe did they did they live long enough to see themselves become the villain? You know what I'm saying? Did they did, did they try to drag oh. it too long? I mean, it's been long. Like it, they, they're yeah. going for a long storyline. Which is I great. Guess my but thought is, is, I guess my thought is the best way of. out isn't to end. You have to end it on a high. Yeah, you do. Just imagine you're seeing a stand-up comedian and they're on stage for like an hour. One of those hot headline comedians, and you know it might dip down in the middle a little bit. But you need to end strong. And I feel confident that they'll do that because I trust Triple H's booking. I trust all the performers involved. Like, I don't think 
either of us have ever questioned any of the performers. It just hasn't been the most compelling story, mm-hmm. which is hard when Roman recently it hasn't been the most compelling story recently thousand percent yes Mm -hmm. in this past year but especially if you look at that stretch from SummerSlam on like roman Mm -hmm. defeated jay and then yeah was was him beating la night at crown jewel and then he disappeared so what are we doing exactly oh yeah and then finally he is roman Who's the last does, person, does Marty? CM Punk decide that he does he get to be here for Man of the Year when he was? Uh... I think he's in the conversation for Man of the Year. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. WWE Man of the Year. Mm-hmm. Now, I I also think it's worth saying that uh, in my mind, he has no right to win this award. Like, look at him; he got fired. This man got fired for some shenanigans. <laughs> And allegedly yeah, just being overbearing out. and mm-hmm. for like trying to give too much feedback and tell people what to do. This is all alleged. Like who knows what actually happened to AEW. But his AEW run this year was not, not a good one for him. Mm-hmm. And yet he was still the conversation. That's the thing. Right. That's the thing. Like Regardless of what he did, he probably was talked about more than every single other person that we mentioned. Um, and a number of people that we haven't mentioned. And then he came back and ended the year on a strong note. So, I mean, just like we talked about with Roman, like definitely ending the year on a more quiet note. CM Punk started the year on a quiet note, got fired, came back, got fired, and then returned again. He's doing the Nia Jax thing, by the way, Mari, returning yeah. twice in one returning year. It's impressive. Yeah. But, I mean... I, I do think there's a conversation of if he's the man of the year because who gets fired and like literally goes up from there? Like that's yeah. so <laughs> Yeah, like and just in the like, up two, two months or the, the month and a half that he was in WWE for 2023, he's been yeah. big rating draw, big, big um I'm sure merch like you said the conversation. Yeah. So uh, TBD, maybe like man of the year TBD for maybe next year or something like that. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to get carried away, but you know what? That would be really impressive if he just keeps his nose clean, and mm-hmm. I would I wouldn't mind that. But he has to really earn it. It's very troubling. It's vex. He's very vexing. Yeah, know. but you know what? He, I mm. think it's it's worth it. So you you think that this year, twenty twenty three, isn't his year? I would agree. You yeah. can't just get fired and have it be a great year for you. For in terms of CM Punk and the way he did things, so for me, talk about. I it. think the man of the year. Going into this, I was going to say Dominic Mysterio because I think he's just been oh. consistent all year. But then you kind of did was like, oh, was it better this year or last year? And I was like, God, it was kind of better last year. So. I think I'm going to go with Seth Rollins. I'll go with Seth Rollins. I think he's had the most consistent year. And that ti- that new title that they gave him could have been like, just a, felt like a consolation prize. But I feel like he's elevated it to the, to the fact that I feel like it feels like it's the main title because Roman's barely there. Well, damn. Because <laughs> I was going to say Dominic Mysterio. Okay. Well, yeah. But, but. but... My problem with that is that, yeah, I mean, he has been so consistent. Like, that's the thing that jumps out to me when I look at the list and I see Dom and I see Seth and I see Cody and I see Roman and I see CM Punk. Like, none of the others have been consistent throughout the year. And somehow Dom has continued to be a strong draw and he's gotten better as a character and as a performer. So I have to say the the man of the year is Dominic Mysterio. There you go. That's wild. I, I mean, so we agreed on Rhea, but Seth, Seth and Seth and Dom are do they share how are we doing this? Do they split the man of the year trophy in half? I don't know. We had we had like out of six awards, we had three that, that were split. So I think it's fine. Yeah, um you know. <laughs> we'll send half of a certificate in the mail. That's that's it for 
this week, I think it was really fun, Matt, catching up in this type of style. Again, we are not taking these quote unquote awards serious. Um, but you know, <laughs> okay, well, I'll take my stamps, but <laughs> but I but uh, we definitely want to hear from you guys what you guys think. Let us know. Do you agree with our picks? Do you, would you have added more people to the categories? Would you have added different categories? Let us know. Mm. Be nice about it, <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about it next time um, on wrestling wrap up. Uh, no. Yeah, and you know what? Mm-hmm. You know what? I have to say, tell like tell tell a friend, tell a friend to tune in, tell your friends to listen and drag mm-hmm. us with their opinions too. Why not? We're we're always open to that. Um, but you thanks everyone for getting to this point in the episode and for being here. And Mari, I think you were gonna probably ask me what I'm up to. See, I'm I I'm was reading I'm reading mine. Yes, you are uh, Mari. This is our this is our third, it's our fourth year. Of the wrestling wrap fourth, up, fourth, twenty twenty one, fourth mania, definitely, I believe. Damn! So we're going in to another mm-hmm. year. Look at us not getting older at all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, you can find me on social media at Matt Scott GW. And the big thing I want to plug is that if you're hearing the sound of our voices, you could also hear me on the show Pod Friends, which is back now with new episodes. The one and only Bryce Isaiah of Survivor, Survivor Kage on fame of the Purple Pants podcast of Bryson when present fame of all the things. Um, Bryce is my guest. He's phenomenal. He's been on the wrestling wrap up. We need to get Bryce back here at some point. That man, yeah. that, if, he, if he's not terrified. By wrestling um we'd love to have gotta do another it's a look with him we will we will yes maybe we'll have holy holy crap mari will be in philly his home oh yeah i don't know i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying so maybe bryce will uh make a cameo with our wrestlemania work see look at me making promises about look at you. things i can't keep but anyway <laughs> um again follow me matt scotchy w and mari where could the people find you uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mari Talks Too Much. That's two, like the number two. Um, but also, so uh, yesterday, this mm-hmm. past weekend, uh, we played. It. Yeah, we we okay, play, we Marty. had a a live um, <laughs> org. Uh, Rob has a podcast presented Traders R H A P. Uh, I participated in it along with like sixteen other wonderful people. We had a great time. It's five hours of amazing viewing. You can go check it out over on the Rob Has a Podcast a YouTube page or um, various Rob Has a Podcast Twitch pages as well. Um, it's like a multi-screen viewing thing, but we had so much fun playing a Traders, uh, like a, the game Traders based on the show Traders with RHAP uh, podcasters, survivors, uh, former survivor players and former Big Brother players. So Definitely go check that out if you're into stuff like that. And then, of course, me and Sarah Kerning bring True Crime Tuesdays to RJP every week on the Crime Scene Podcast. Yes, uh, Rob has a podcast, has a crime scene. We have a crime, a true crime podcast. Uh, they, so, they know, Mari. If they don't know, I don't know. By now. I, you would I mean, be they don't surprised. Know by now. No, our listeners surprised. know. Crime Scene, the number one <laughs> podcast on Rob is a podcast. <laughs> According to me, um, other than uh, obviously the you rest would be blah, blah. surprised how many times I hear like, "Oh, I didn't know you had a wrestling." Well, podcast. maybe they should you had a true crime and then learn about the podcast. Exactly. Wait, what is it Mari? Rob has a website. Rob has a website. dot com slash crime feed. Yes, and mm-hmm. our most recent episode featured Matt Scott. It <laughs> featured Matt talking about a cult with me and Sarah. So yes, definitely go check it out. Go subscribe. If you if you have fun with us over here, you can have fun with us over there over mm-hmm. on Crime Scene. Um, please, of course, rate and review it. It helps us tremendously. Um, subscribe to our podcast feed by going to robhadswebsite.com slash wrestling feed if you haven't already. Um, go check us out on YouTube. Like help us help us get up the numbers during this this amazing season we're about to put together for you guys. We're about to like mm-hmm. blow your socks off with uh, the amount of guests and stuff that we both bring of on. them. So <laughs> all of the socks. <laughs> oh. So you can also send any of your 
questions, comments, suggestions to wrestling at robhaswellwebsite.com. We'll read it here. Or you can um, follow us at Wrestling Rehap Up. That's at Wrestling R H A P U P um, on Twitter. Use hashtag Wrestling Rehap Up. Um, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see it there. Of course, shout out to the Job Has a Squadcast Facebook group, our unofficial, official uh, Facebook group of the uh, Wrestling Rehap Up. We love everybody in there. Thank you for the support. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you want to join, just you can message us and we'll, we'll get you in there. And of course, uh, anytime is a good time to join the RHAP Patreon. Um, you can go to www.patreon.com slash RHAP to become a patron uh, and get all these amazing things, the, the traders things, uh, access to event tickets sooner, access Ooh. to exclusive patron five for fives, such Ooh. amazing stuff. Uh, go become a patron today. All right. That's it. We are so nice. glad to be back. We cannot wait to show you all of the things we have in store. If you have any ideas for us, of course, reach out and let us know. Um, just remember, wrestling is for everybody, but not all wrestling is for everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling liver half up's gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like a young couple Blair, huh? Best podcast, fuck shit in the air, huh? From the rings, and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw em up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling liver half up's gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party. Hey,